I'm Jack. I play the saxophones in Portico Quartet. My name's Duncan Bellamy. I play drums and electronics and things. My name's Milo Fitzpatrick. I play bass. I'm Nick Mulvey and I play the hang drum in Portico Quartet. So we just uh, finished sound checking here at the ICA and it's good to be back in London after the long tour. It feels like we've been away for lifetimes, so it's good to be back on home turf. We're here to celebrate the re-release of Knee Deep in the North Sea, which is our first album, um, and earned a Mercury Prize nomination. And that sort of reset the ball rolling really and set us up uh, for the release of Isla with Real World and the sort of everything that's, that's followed. Knee Deep, I guess, was the culmination from the very start of the band, from everyone meeting each other. It was really fun days. We used to just go busk down at the South Bank in London and all around London and all around Europe. And a lot of the music, uh, the way it was composed, um, was very much kind of influenced by the, the parameters which you have in busking, um, the type of sonic abilities you have, where by it's mainly acoustic, well, all acoustic, and also uh, the style in which we compose. The, the, the pieces are very kind of lyrical and kind of song based. And then we decided we wanted to, you know, after all these demos we put together, we wanted to get something which sounded really good. So we got all our student loans and thought, okay, we can find a studio, we have to get enough equipment and, and an engineer who just understands where we're coming from. And we found this place uh, in North London, uh, Liverston Studios, and uh, found a, a great engineer, a guy called Sonny, and he really loved the music and that always helps in the whole process. And yeah, I think we did the first bunch of sessions in about three days, and that was really, really fun, because of a lot of us, that was the first time we went into a studio. just because every step leading up to it had been that way, you know, from the novelty of the hang drum always turning heads and people always sort of gushing, you know, it really was like amazing. And, and we were all, I remember just high times, you know, we just didn't really know this thing we had between us. And, and uh, so I always felt very confident about it. And then I think I remember listening to Giles Peterson play it one night quite late and he said, I'll watch out for the kind of murky music time. We didn't really know that we were making something new, um, but I think that it's that aspect about it that really made the difference. And I think it, it is the duality of having a hang drum as, a, as a, a fresh sound and a new instrument, and the way it sounds on its own, but also the way it glues our sound together, you know. We had to just, when we first started in, in Knee Deep, the hang makes it sound like it's produced already, because it's such a fine tone, and it gels the bass, brings down the soprano sax, Duncan you know, chose his symbols very carefully so these symbols fill in the spaces and, and we had that before we had any repertoire.
2007, I think, um, by uh, an independent kind of jazz label run from the Vortex Jazz Club, which is a great platform for us to start start off in London, kind of going from outdoors from the streets into playing in small jazz clubs and into concert halls, and then yeah, the 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 CD got um, nominated for the American Music Awards and. That was just the whole other gear shift. clear that there was things that we could build on with Knee Deep and one of the main things was production and the the way the sounds are on record and I think one of the particular areas we felt was kind of the bass frequencies and to put it another way sort of more punch more body uh, because we do ethereal quite easily and quite well but there was that kind of you know which is about a lot of things actually is to do with mic placement and but also like mixing and mastering and so we already had our sights set on something that would take us towards a producer and more of a produced record and at the same time signing to real world records we then had the I suppose the, the contacts to then have access to to that producer <laughs> I first heard Portico Quartet when they were nominated for the Mercury Music Prize and I actually when I heard them I then ran off and bought the record and really enjoyed it and I came up uh, to Real World and met Amanda and she said oh we're working with the Portico Quartet and wow I just got the record I've been playing it in the car so there was a kind of connection before I you know before I, 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 I worked with them um, and when I first heard them um, of course that my ears uh, pricked up because there was a unique sound there was something special about it which was the hang the overtone of the hang instrument um, and the melodies really and uh, the unexpectedness of what the rhythm patterns were doing and um, uh, the overall sound was something kind of unique and and quite special that I hadn't heard before we met John Leckie um, when he recorded Isla um, which we did at Abbey Road about phew, coming up for probably about a year and a half ago, I think. We recorded it then. Um, an amazing, amazing producer. Really good at just capturing uh, a live sound, I think, mainly, and like, the dynamics of us playing live and the, the group dynamics and the relationships between us, and just really bringing out um, our personalities in the music, I think when we wanted to get the Knee Deep um, session kind of remixed. We wanted to bring certain things uh, which John could do in production um, out and kind of enhance them. And that was, uh, that was uh, you know, a really great thing because it just means that we could imagine the, the record a lot more fully and we, we, could, we could hear all the different constituent parts but still keeping that kind of chamber kind of jazz um, it's kind of quite innocent kind of makeup to the to the, the kind of the different parts and the way they interrelate and stuff.
Over the last two years where we've been playing, or the year and a half where we've been playing Isla Live, we've really developed those songs and actually built on those quite a lot, especially in terms of the electronics and and yeah, I think the relationship between us has definitely improved and there's lots of different bits we've added to it. And that kind of sound and that sonic palette that we've developed, um, we're really looking forward to writing new tunes and utilising that, that sound into our, for, for our next album. And also just bringing, uh, yeah, bringing in new elements like kind of sampled parts as well and like a lot of uh, we've been doing a lot of kind of live manipulation where Duncan's been like sampling me live and then putting effects on my saxophone so we've got these kind of cross channels going on and then bringing in I, I, I mean it's it's just quite open which is quite exciting at the moment I mean we've developed this sound but it's got I think there's loads of spaces that we could go with it but it's feeling quite yeah I'm quite optimistic about it